Hello, my name is Davide Ponzini. I am an associate professor of urban planning and the director of the Transnational Architecture and Urbanism Lab at Politecnico di Milano. Today, I will discuss the complex relationship between mega events and their urban context. In particular, the issues of diffusion of mega events in the city, of infrastructure and connection to the urban fabric and of their governance are clearly ambivalent. I will argue that there are great opportunities as well as great challenges for cities that host mega events. I will use cultural heritage and built heritage in particular to exemplify the urban context and its features. Heritage tends to amplify these kinds of urban opportunities and challenges and make them more visible. Also, I will draw on different kinds of mega events and examples. In this picture, for example, you see the city of Matera and its surroundings. This city is one of the oldest continuously lived in cities in the world. Its historic city center was built on a rock and literally excavated in a ravine. The name of this neighborhood is Sassi, that is the Italian word for rocks. Very spectacular heritage, very fragile. This environment that we inherited from thousands of years of human activities is in fact quite prone to mass tourism. The UNESCO World Heritage Site of the Sassi made this place known internationally since the 1990s. In 2019, Matera was the European capital of culture. This mega event consists of a one year long program of cultural celebrations and events, both based on local culture and international artists, experts and cultural networks. In this image, you can see the opening ceremony of January 19, 2019. Dozens of marching bands came from all over the region, as well as from all over Europe to this site that was adapted for the occasion in order to house thousands of people in a former quarry called Cava del Sole. This and many other events put the city under the spotlight at the international level and attracted further attention and tourists. Of course, this was an important opportunity for the city and region of Matera. At the same time, local actors saw this mega event as a risk for their heritage and cultural activities more generally. Some actors cooperated for the mega event, others did not. For example, this transformation of the Cava del Sole is important as it provides a new cultural place for Matera. However, it remains little connected to the rest of the city, as the mega event planning and the ordinary planning for infrastructure and transportation could not converge fully. A majority of the events within the Matera 2019 European Capital of Culture took place within the historic city centre with performances throughout the UNESCO listed Sassi area. One problem is that transforming the city in order to host mega events such as this is difficult. In complex and layered situations like the historic city center of Matera, this may become an impossible task. Several roads and streets could be improved in order to make the city more accessible to the growing tourist fluxes, but many projects had to be cancelled or located elsewhere because of the contrasting powers and policies in the city. Several events took place in multiple locations and not only in the historic city center, in order to lower the pressure on heritage sites. But in long term, one cannot say that this changed the image of the city and its tourism, also considering that two months after the end of the celebration of the European Capital of Culture, the COVID-19 pandemic broke out and changed tourism habits. In a recent publication, Zachary Jones correctly argued that urban heritage is a great vantage point to see the ambivalences and complexities of mega events. This is why critically discussing cases like the Matera 2019 European Capital of Culture is important for many other cities. In the past, mega events have been interpreted as accelerators and amplifiers of processes of urban development, redevelopment or transformation more generally. In particular, mega events were expected to make greater funds available for infrastructure facilities, the injection of new functions in the host cities as well. However, recently many cities started rejecting the bigger is better approach 
to hosting mega events. The last several bidding cycles for the Olympic Games, in particular, have seen many candidate cities abruptly cancel their bids. For this reason, the IOC developed the Agenda 2020. This was meant to transition toward more sustainable and shared formats for the Olympics. One way is reusing existing facilities and integrating the event in the city fabric using what's locally available, in other words. And this position maintains that the new approach may generate mega events that are less expensive in general and more sustainable in particular. However, in my opinion, this position underestimates the great challenges that the Matera case shows in terms of diffusion of mega events in the city fabric, of connection and of governance. You see here the Queen Elizabeth II Olympic Park. It was developed for the London 2012 Olympics. It is a project of regeneration and real estate appreciation that provided infrastructure, public services and important new node in East London. This large platform was connected with its surroundings through fringe plans. Some even argued that the plan generated new landmarks for the city. You can see here the London Aquatic Centre and the ArcelorMittal orbit tower that remained after the mega event. In my view, these iconic buildings represent a high level of disconnect between the mega event site and the surrounding urban landscape. In London, the Olympics generated several moments for discussing how to integrate mega event interventions with urban development more generally. However, the hard deadline of this mega event typically allowed the Olympic Agency to have overriding powers and to polarize decisions. This led to the long-term effects of this operation in East London to benefit part of the stakeholders only and induce the forced relocation of other social groups and economic activities. You see here an official image for the Paris 2024 Olympics. As the research by Maria Gravari Barbas showed, many iconic buildings, monuments and places will be directly involved by the sporting events. Heritage places will not be the backdrop of games only. For example, the area around the Eiffel Tower and Le Les Invalides Esplanade in this picture will host beach volley games. In Place de la Concorde, heritage will be involved as well but perhaps valorization is quite ambiguous, as you see in this picture. The sport events will require temporary structures that impair the perception and use of this place. In 2024, the city of Paris will be seen from new points of view from the opening ceremony along the Seine River. As well, during the event, special permits will allow helicopters to film the city from unprecedented viewpoints and its icons to be broadcasted worldwide. The overall strategy has been to plan limited and temporary interventions in the city fabric trying to avoid political conflicts. The Kunsthaus Museum in Graz is a very concrete example of urban transformation in relation to one mega event. This museum is located within the UNESCO World Heritage Site it was inaugurated in the occasion of the 2003 European Capital of Culture in that city. Here you can see the Kunsthaus from the street level and in connection with the surrounding facades. Clearly, this addition has been engaging with the city fabric and functioning for the years following the mega event. This building earned the nickname of Friendly Alien. It is a beloved and controversial element in the life of Graz. The Polish city of Wroclaw decided to valorize both the most obvious heritage and less known places for the celebration of the 2016 European Capital of Culture. In this case, a performance of light on the riverbanks of Oder used the cathedral and other historic buildings. At the same time, for the European Capital of Culture, minor and sometimes neglected historic places were brought back to life through smaller events and community-level activities. 
This generated a complex bottom-up governance between the mega-event organization and several community groups, as well as more diffuse social mobilization and consensus. Artists and art installations can help give new life and meaning to heritage in connection with mega-events. The case of Hull 2017 UK City of Culture is important in this regard. During the opening ceremony, a light show engaged with the City Hall and the surrounding buildings. Mega-events can be both positive and negative for different reasons and different social groups. Diffusing activities, improving infrastructure, and in managing the planning, implementation and legacy may be hard and lead to controversial results. It is important to start creatively rethinking the presence of mega-events in cities and face these complexities. Recently, the Tao Lab of Politecnico di Milano coordinated a European research project called HOMI that stands for Heritage Opportunities and Threats Within Mega Events in Europe. The research project took on this team and developed a set of recommendations for policymakers. We will monitor the effects of our recommendations in complex situations such as the examples I presented in this short speech. Thank you for the kind attention.